This is the Rookie Big Board Running Back Preview Episode Part 2 for the 2023 Rookie Class. On this episode, I'm going to run through Running Back Prospects 9 through 22. Yes, I know I said 9 through 20 on the Part 1 episode. There were two more running backs that I felt like I needed to squeeze into this episode So in about 20, 25 minutes time here, we're going to run through, give you a really solid overview, make sure you feel comfortable with the entire 2023 running back class as it stands right now. So we're going to move quickly through this episode, but before we jump into it here, I just want to take a moment and encourage folks, this is the season. This is the time of the year to head on over to patreon.com slash rookie big board Get in on the Rookie Big Board rankings, full tape evals, profiles. I have over 40 prospects now done with 2022 film eval. Over 50 prospects have some level of film eval right now. We're going to keep working through the goals, another 80 to 85 film evals this year. And of course, all 125, 130 fantasy football relevant Draft eligible candidates will be in the Rookie Big Board. You also get access to the Discord, just $3 a month. As we go through, I'll actually be reading off the profile. So I want to quickly just show if you're watching on YouTube, if you're listening to the podcast, hang on for 10 seconds, listen through. But I just want to show folks who are watching. This is what I'm actually doing as we work through these videos. I'm opening up the profiles. You could see here my running backs up top. I have all the boards, super flex, one quarterback filtered by position here. And I'm actually opening up as we go the profiles of each of these players. And I'm running through my summary my tape notes, and all of my grades for these players as we go through this episode. So without further delay here, let's jump into it with Devin Achain. Now, I promised Devin Achain was the running back nine the whole time, and maybe I'm just good at planting teasers here, but folks were not thrilled that Devin Achain was not in the top eight of my running back rankings. So I'm going to talk through the player here, and then I'm going to explain myself a little bit more as to why. Now, Devin Achain, 5'9", 185, four-star recruit here. I've been projected to be a future running back two to three. So first and foremost, I'm not hating on Devin Achain. It speaks to the strength of the class. I'm still expecting him to perform somewhere in the running back to 30 to 36 overall range here over the first few years of his career. And I do have a super flex ADP projection is 201 to 204. So I'm listening to you all. I understand that you want him to go higher and be higher in rankings, and that's fine. That's why this projection lays down. Projection lays down what I'm hearing from consensus and from folks around the fantasy football community on YouTube, on Twitter, on Reddit, in the patron Discord. They're talking about Devin Achain, so I pushed up his projection here, but I think he's going to be NFL draft projection 50 to 102. So why am I a little bit lower than relatively Devin Achain? First and foremost, straight line burner here. He's going to be a special teams contributor. If you flip on Devin Achain highlights, you're going to like what you see because he's really fast. He's going to dominate the 40, and you can watch him run back kickoffs for touchdowns. It's fun. He's a fun player to watch. He's a good pass catcher as well. I think he's going to contribute really well to a passing game. He's elusive in tight space. He's got good burst into the second level of the field. The size concerns me, folks. I've fallen in love with undersized running backs before, and that's why I'm just proceeding with a little bit of hesitation. The speed will likely outweigh the size for NFL purposes, but I don't see him coming out and being a guy who's consistently going to get around 225 to 250 touches a season. If you're not in that 200-plus touch range, it's going to be really hard for you to consistently produce at a running back to or higher level ceiling. And he may have seasons where he does that if he ends up in the right landing spot. But I have to proceed with a little bit of caution. I think he's going to be a great NFL player, but I worry about his fantasy football translation here. My fantasy comp form is Naheem Hines. And if you didn't like my ranking of him, you might not like that comp, but I love Naheem Hines. Naheem Hines is one of my favorite players. I've stashed him over the last few years. It's worked at times. It hasn't worked at times, but If you look at the way he's elusive in tight space, he can contribute to the passing game. He's fast. Naheem Hines, I believe, was in the 95th percentile for 40 time, a similar size build. And so I think with Devin Achain, you're getting Naheem Hines. I like Naheem Hines, but I have to proceed with reasonable expectations. And that's why Devin Achain is coming in at number nine. Still a player I really like. Let's move on to Kenny McIntosh, the running back out of Georgia. Kenny McIntosh, 6'1", 210, former four-star. Of course, being a running back at Georgia always comes with a high recruiting prestige. 
I have his super flex ADP projection later second round. I think if you did a consensus pool of rookie drafts right now, Kenny McIntosh probably would be in the third round. I think he's somebody who's going to gain momentum here over the next couple of months. I do expect him to catch that draft capital back end of day two. He's somebody who could swing into day three, somebody definitely to keep an eye on. But when you watch his tape here, there's a lot to like about Kenny McIntosh. He shoots off the line of scrimmage, hits the hole hard. He's a really scrappy runner, does not go down down on first contact and he has a lot of consistency running in between the tackles there's multiple examples of his strength throughout the game he matches it or i'm sorry strength at the goal line throughout the season and he pairs that strength with quickness he wins off tackle he's elusive in open space he's an excellent pass catcher i think he's a legitimate downfield threat and so when i'm telling you that there's a 6'1 210 running back who's a legitimate downfield threat that should perk up your eyes for fantasy football purposes now his production won't jump off the tape only 2000 combined yards for him over the course of his UGA career but for folks who aren't familiar UGA rotates through a ton of talented running backs to keep these guys fresh right Nick Chubb didn't have the wildest college stats DeAndre Swift didn't have the wildest college stats Sony Michelle didn't have the wildest college stats these guys still translated perfectly fine to the NFL I think what should pop out to you again I mentioned his frame 6 1 2 10 he has 806 receiving yards and 70 receptions in his career compared to 1,400 rushing yards. They very much used him as a pass catching running back, but he still found the end zone 16 times on the ground. Fantasy comp here, I see a lot of Kareem Hunt here in Kenny McIntosh. I think he gets a similar NFL draft selection, and he could end up being a similar fantasy football contributor. Roshan Johnson. Don't forget about Roshan Johnson. If you leave this episode with nothing, I hope it is that you should know about Roshan Johnson. He's the other running back at Texas, and I hate to label him that way, but that's how everybody's going to talk about him all offseason. 6'1", 223, a former four-star recruit in his own right. Now, he did play behind B. John Robinson, and folks, you can knock him for that if you want, but there's just about everybody in the country at this point that would be playing behind B. John Johnson or B. John Robinson, sorry, in the Texas offense here. So I do expect Roshan to be a mid to late second round rookie pick by the end of it, a similar rise in value uh, as Kenny McIntosh. So I would compare these two guys in a very similar way in terms of their fantasy football value. Now, they don't run exactly the same way. Roshan Johnson, more of a power back. He displays good contact balance when, he's, when he runs. He fights through defenders. I would actually label his contact balance as top level. I don't like using the E word elite, so I'm not going to, but it's a top level contact balance. He pairs that with fluid and quick feet, which I love to see from a 220 pound back elusive in space lateral quickness here. I'm seeing some David Johnson in his game. Now I think David Johnson has a fantasy comp, uh, his ceiling, David Johnson's ceiling, I think maybe a little bit higher than Roshan Johnson's ceiling, but I could see Johnson being this guy that's taking, you know, pick 90, pick 100, right on that border of day two and day three. Isn't a starter right away, but we know in the NFL with running backs, you're always one injury away from volume. And so Roshan Johnson could be a guy, right? Maybe say he goes to New Orleans, for example. He's in line running back to something happens to Alvin Kamara. All of a sudden, now he's a volume tight back. So that's the type of projection and, and, you know, path I could see for Roshan Johnson being fantasy relevant here for the fact that he was not the starter over his career, over 2,500 combined yards, 23 rushing touchdowns in 47 games, definitely more experienced with Roshan Johnson. If you like early breakout age, you probably won't like him and you probably won't like this next guy, but you should, because I am a huge, huge fan of Oklahoma's Eric Gray. Now, before we proceed here, I just want to point out, if you're watching along here on YouTube, you're seeing the cue cards. We have moved into a different tier of running backs. All the guys that I've talked about earlier today are what I call weekly starters. These are guys that can plug into your lineup as running backs, twos and threes, 24 to 36 overalls. Now I'm getting into my flex filler range for running backs. And these are guys that are going to plug in as your running back threes, fours, right? So we're talking about uh, guys who are going to be running back 36 to 48 overall. You're going to look at them week in and week out. And if you need to fill a flex spot in your fantasy football lineup, you're going to look at matchup and you're going to consider guys like Eric Gray. Eric Gray projection here, 301 to 304 in rookie drafts. I do expect him to sneak into the back end of day two of the NFL draft. Not many folks will agree with me on this, but I'm looking at a 5'9", 206, former four-star recruit. Eric Gray was a three-time 
Mr. Tennessee high school player that is given to the highest high school player in the state of Tennessee. The first time anybody had ever won three of them. He started his career with the University of Tennessee, was really productive, uh, was was really good in a bad offense. And then in this Josh Heupel uh, to, or I'm sorry, Jeremy Pruitt to Josh Heupel transition, Eric Gray was one of many, many players that left, was recruited by Lincoln Riley in Oklahoma for good reason. Everybody was really excited about Eric Gray going into the 2021 season, and he just didn't play. I mean, he just didn't play. Kennedy Brooks played, and then we didn't get hyped this year. And then Eric Gray played this year, went for over 1,300 yards on the ground, over 1,500 scrimmage yards, and nobody's talking about Eric Gray, the running back out of Oklahoma, but I will because he's a shifty runner. He displays the ability to pop off the line of scrimmage and shoot into that second level of the field. He runs really well through the A-gap, and he plays well off tackle. All right, he speeds up quickly in space. He has the ability to run downhill with powerful momentum. I see sharp footwork. I see a unique tenacity, all right? So he's not going to overpower you, but he's going to be aggressive. He's going to be tenacious to run through the end of the play here. And Eric Gray is a reliable pass catcher. You look at his college career, 99 receptions, 827 receiving yards. And like I mentioned earlier, 1,300 rushing yards this year, but he was productive for the Vols earlier on in his career, just shy of 3,100 rushing yards over the course of his career. 6.4 yards per carry folks we got to go back a couple of years to really sink into this comp but remember Lamar Miller Lamar Miller was a really good consistent player he would mostly work in between the tackles but he could catch some passes too Lamar Miller had some big fantasy seasons that's my fantasy comp here to Eric Gray Dwayne McBride, 5'11", 215, three-star. Now, Dwayne McBride does, I believe, still have two years of eligibility left because of COVID. He hasn't declared yet. I don't know if he will. But if he does, he's somebody I'm excited about. I think through the combine process, he'll rise into be a late second-round rookie pick here. And I think he could push day two draft capital. Dwayne McBride is out of the University of Alabama, Birmingham. You may not have heard of him. A little bit smaller of a school, but certainly doesn't play small here. He shoots off the line of scrimmage, attacks gaps, with tenacity. He speeds up quickly when accelerating in a straight line. I think that's what's going to get folks really excited when you see some of these Dwayne McBride highlights. He goes to the combine. He runs an excellent 40 time. You could see him a really pop through small gaps. I love when I could see running backs hit small gaps, pop out through the other side, shakes off defenders. He'll stonewall linebackers he goes heads up against. And now I know what you're saying. All right, well, he can stonewall uh, Sun Belt defenders here. Well, the tape I watched was BYU. It was LSU. He plays big against big competition that is something i highly value when evaluating group of five prospects especially running backs because it helps gives you an idea of how they're going to physically hold up at the next level he's got a nice jump step he'll scrap through the end of the play 3,500 rushing yards in three seasons, 36 touchdowns in 31 games, and he's averaging 7.3 yards per carry. I know it's a little bit lazy of a comp because I'm picking out another really fast straight line group of five back, but Elijah Mitchell is who I'm reminded of when I think of Dwayne McBride, and I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. I mentioned it's a little bit of a lazy comp. You could call me out on it. By the way, as we're working through all of these comps, as we're working through all of these rankings, please Drop some comments if you're watching on YouTube. If you're listening, let's chat it up in the Discord here. If you are watching on YouTube, though, please subscribe. Please like. It goes really far. All right? So I'd appreciate it. But back to why I chose Elijah Mitchell. Because I slept on Elijah Mitchell. I saw Mitchell's tape and I said, you know, this looks good, but it wasn't as consistent. You know, I, I didn't necessarily buy all in. And then he went to the combine and I said, I don't know, you know, group of five guy. I don't know about the competition. Maybe it wasn't really there. And of course, Elijah Mitchell is come. And when he's given the opportunity, he's taken it. Right. And so I'm not saying Dwayne McBride is Elijah Mitchell, but what I am saying is that I go through, as I go through the scouting process and I do this year over year, I do learn my lessons. I do adjust my process as I learn from guys that I've missed on or didn't evaluate as highly on that others were high on. I look back, I see why, and I make those adjustments. And that's how we improve every year here. Deuce Vaughn. Deuce Vaughn is fun. If nothing else, flip on some Deuce Vaughn tape as you're going through this draft process and just enjoy them. Just sit back and have fun with it here because there is going to be a lot of controversy around Deuce Vaughn. Is he going to be worth having on your fantasy team? Is he not? The reason why he's going to be controversial, he's listed at 5'6", 172. All right, he's listed at 5'6", 172. If you were 5'6", 172, don't you think you would probably have your school list you a little bit higher? So who knows? Maybe he's sub 5'6". Maybe he's in the 160s. He plays, uh, he's a three-star recruit. And I got to tell you, that may not sound exciting, but to be a three-star recruit playing at, you know, he was probably recruited closer to 155, right? So 
that's pretty good to still get that high recruiting ranking. His uh, Superflex ADP projection right now, I have a back end of the third round, 305 to 308. I wouldn't be shocked if he ends up actually being in the fourth round, but I do think folks are going to want to draft him just because he's really fun. I do have his uh, his uh, draft projection here as day three early here. I don't think Deuce Vaughn is going to have a shot at securing day two NFL draft capital. All right, so let's dig into him a little bit more. If you're not familiar with the Kansas State running back here, he's a really speedy runner. He is very elusive in space here. He has great footwork. He darts around the field. He darts through holes he's slippery he's elusive he uses that small frame to slide by defenders drop spin moves when needed great lateral quickness breaks defenders with sharp cuts proves that you can be fast in different ways because he's speedy in the short field he's quick moving side to side he accelerates well downfield he has reliable hands and can easily contribute to an nfl passing attack which is why i do think he's going to get drafted i do think he's going to contribute to an nfl roster but is it ever going to be at a high volume capacity so that's why i'm saying back end of the third round early fourth round you're going to want to draft talent as much as you can and hope that volume comes through whenever we get into that that round of rookie drafts we're throwing darts anyways right and you might as well throw a dart on an exciting guy who has a lot of upside if he gets on the field now, his size has not stopped him from being super productive. He's the second all-time leading rusher at Kansas State, 3,500 rushing yards, 1,280 receiving yards, 116 career receptions, 33 career rushing touchdowns, nine receiving touchdowns. It's a lazy comp. It's an easy comp. But sometimes, folks, that's the correct comp, and it's Darren Sproles. That's the fantasy comp here for Deuce Vaughn. Of course, that's the high end. I hope he hits it because he's a really fun player. Christopher Rodriguez, running back, 5'11", 224, three-star. Now, I know a lot of folks are listening to this episode right now, and you're very annoyed that I haven't said a more popular name, a name that a lot of folks wanted in my top eight, the first video that I dropped. And I promise that name is coming on deck, but hold with me. You know, hold your expletives. I'm going to explain why. All right, back to the Kentucky running back, Christopher Rodriguez here. 5'11", 224, three-star recruit. I've been projected in that running back three to four range here. So the same range I've been talking about, guys like Dwayne McBride, guys like Eric Gray. I do have his NFL draft projection as day three. I have an early day three, which is rounds four or five. It wouldn't shock me if Christopher Rodriguez actually slipped to six or seven. I initially had him at six or seven, but just a little bit of a tidbit. So Christopher Rodriguez was invited to the Senior Bowl. Now, Jim Nagy, the director of the Senior Bowl, when he identifies players, he talks with NFL front offices. That's how they get invitations. And his cutoff mark is that he's aiming to invite only players that they expect to go in the first five rounds of the NFL draft. So where I initially had Christopher Rodriguez round six and seven, I bumped him up when I saw that he had the senior bowl invite. That doesn't mean he's definitely going to go round five, but it gives me a little bit more confidence to bump him up. And when I bumped up his draft capital, he jumped over a couple guys that, you know, just on paper, I liked a little bit better, but we need to factor in how the NFL uh, how we're perceiving the NFL is valuing these players or else we're not really getting a good idea of future opportunity. So it's back to the actual player here with Christopher Rodriguez. He's a powerful back, all right? He runs over defensive backs. He drags forward piles of SEC linemen. He pops off the line of scrimmage, engages with linebackers with force. Rodriguez is rarely going to go down on first contact. His, his tenacity will be admired by NFL front offices. He's effective shooting up the A-gap. He'll primarily work as a two-down back at the next level, though. So I don't like him as a PPR type guy. If for some reason you're still playing in a standard league, I guess bump this guy up a few spots. Don't draft Deuce Vaughn, who I just mentioned earlier. If you're playing in standard leagues, Christopher Rodriguez is the type of guy that you're looking for here. Now, he's not overly elusive. He's not overly athletic, but he's elusive enough. He's athletic enough to make guys miss in tight space. Very productive runner here. 3,600 rushing yards, 116 receiving yards. Uh, I'm sorry, 3,600 3, rushing yards, 33 rushing touchdowns. Contrast that with just 116 receiving yards and 20 career receptions here. 6.2 yards per carry. Uh, the fantasy comp here, he reminds me a lot of Isaiah Crowell, what you could get from him. So we're going to go with Isaiah Crowell for Christopher Rodriguez's fantasy comp. Now, here it is, Kendra Miller. All right, 60218. A lot of folks wanted Kendra Miller a lot higher up. And so I'm going to use Kendra Miller as an opportunity not only to explain the player, but as much as possible through this pre draft process. I like to talk about the process, right? Because that's really what we should be picking up on from this show, from this uh, experience here uh, as we're breaking down these players. I want to work through the process of how I get to guys. I'm not just you know, randomly ranking guys. 
All right, that's not my approach here. I follow, I track these guys all year, all year long. And here's how it works. So most prospects here, not most prospects, the big prospects in the class will start with a summer scouting tape evaluation from me. When I say summer scouting, I'm talking about probably the 40 to 50 top guys in the class. I spend time in the summer before the, the draft eligible year. So this would be summer 2022 in this context. And I'll put on two or three games of tape. I'll get a baseline evaluation on them. Right. And that's kind of how I build out my, my list. And then I look at other guys that I expect to declare and I add them to the list. And then as we go through the college football season, that's when the rookie big board really starts to grow and shape because I start to get an idea through live watching, you know, who's exciting, who's going to jump out, who I can see rising up through the NFL draft process, keeping my ear on the ground with what the NFL draft thinks, what, what I'm perceiving NFL front offices to think. Right. And that's how we build out the big board. So Kendrick Miller was not in my summer scouting because preseason, he wasn't somebody that I was convinced was going to declare. So we go into this year or declare and be draft relevant, I should say. So going into this season, I'm watching TCU. And just like many folks probably listening right now, your understanding of Kendrick Miller for me was like, wow, this guy is explosive. He's fun. He's dynamic. He's racking up these yardage. Like he's going to be somebody on the rise in this NFL draft process, right? So as I build out the big board, I put these guys, I identify them. I put some perceived draft capital in there. I put some perceived fantasy football value in there and it helps kind of shake out guys. And Kendra Miller was hanging out higher than where he is right now in this episode. So I'm excited. I flip on the Kendra Miller tape here. And as we get into it, there was a lot that I liked about Kendra Miller. He shoots off the line of scrimmage. He shows bursts through the A gap for big gain. These are the things that are catching people's attention, right? As we're live watching when he breaks free, there is impressive downfield acceleration relative to his playing weight. So he's playing at 218, and my man can scoot for playing at 218. So again, I understand why folks are excited. He's light on his feet. He has clean cuts. It's a nice jump step. And although he's not heavily involved in the passing game, I wouldn't call him a liability, uh, but I don't perceive him as somebody who's going to necessarily get 50 to 60 targets at the next level, right? Now, where I struggle with Kendra Miller, and this is something that you know really gets folks uh, unhappy with my evaluation with running backs really consistently. I've learned to be comfortable with it because oftentimes it works out in the way that I expect it to inconsistent vision. When you have inconsistent vision as a running back at the college level, I'm not confident that you are going to gain that vision higher at the next level. It's not the same type of player, but I remember one reason that I was really opposed to Chuba Hubbard was because I saw inconsistent vision, despite the fact that he was this big home run hitter, right? He was a, a huge, I mean, borderline Heisman candidate at one point. Folks were really excited about him. And throughout the whole process, I was trying to tempt down expectations because vision is a major red flag. And we've seen that. Chuba Hubbard's hung around the NFL. He's had fantasy football relevant weeks for sure. He, you know, he's not a scrub, but he, he wasn't necessarily this guy who folks originally thought was a first, second round rookie pick, right? And again, I'm not comparing the players one-to-one, -one, but I'm just trying to give you uh, an example of, of how I really emphasize vision as something that's important for me. Now, despite playing close to 220, I don't see Kendra Miller overpowering big 12 defenders, especially at the goal line. And if you're going to play at 220 and you're not consistently overpowering defenders at the goal line, that is a red flag for me because we need those touchdowns. All right, a guy like Kendry Miller, who's not going to be a three down back, needs to be able to score rushing touchdowns to consistently be fantasy football relevant. All right, so uh, that's a red flag for me. And I also see inconsistency in pass protection, which is going to, again, Get him, not get him on the field. And so, although I like Kendra Miller, although I do expect him, you know, he'll be an early day three selection in my projection. I have his rookie ADP 205 to 208 because I do think folks are still going to draft him high, even if he has a little bit lower of draft capital. That's where I'm at with Kendra Miller right now. My fantasy comp for him is Peyton Barber, which isn't a bad fantasy comp. Like Peyton Barber was a good fantasy football player. Was he this guy that should be a top five ranking in a rookie running back list? No. But was he a good fantasy football player to have on your roster? Yes. So I'm not sitting here telling you Kendra Miller won't be good at fantasy football and he won't put up some big weeks, but he's not somebody that I'm ranking as high right now. Now, that being said, and before we move on to the next guy here, and we do still have plenty of guys to talk about, I want to point out that this process isn't done. So once we get into the, the actual film review period here, I get three or four games on, on a player, depending on you know how much I want to see from them, if I'm seeing some things and I, I want to dig into tape a little bit more, how much tape I could get on each player. You know, It's different depending on if you're at TCU or you're at a, a D1 FCS school or something like that. So uh, all that being said is you know I, I have three games on Kendra Miller right now. I have Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, uh, and Texas 2022. As we go through the pre-draft process, if he smashes the combine, I'm going to go back. I'm going to look again. 
You know, if if I'm hearing from the NFL front offices, and I'm not hearing from NFL front offices, I don't want that. That sounds misleading. All right, I don't have anybody on the phone, but if, if NFL front offices are kind of you know letting some things you know get out about Kendra Miller, if he's gaining hype through the Senior Bowl, if he's gaining hype through the combine, I'll go in, I'll add you know two, three more games to tape, and sometimes as I watch more tape, I'm able to see more. Maybe oh, you know, this one game he showed that he was really physical at the goal line. You know, all right, so maybe I I just you know didn't get the best view of it from the games that I did see. But from what I saw, I like Kendra Miller, but I don't love him nearly as much as I know the YouTube comments are going to tell me uh, and, and certainly, you know, the Twitter comments, but drop them. I love having the back and forth. And it's so important that you guys are feeding me this insight because I can bump up his Superflex ADP rookie projection based on what I'm hearing, even though he's not necessarily as high in my rankings. All right, we are not done yet, folks. There are still good running backs to talk about here. Mo Ibrahim, 5'9", 210, three-star recruit here. Future running back four or five. So we have hit another tier drop here. This is what I call bench depth. All right. So guys playing in, uh, uh, you know, uh, folks playing here in uh, leagues with uh, 25, 30 man rosters here. All right. Uh, deep, deep benches. This is the type of running back you want Mo Ibrahim on your bench here. I don't think he's going to come with high draft cap. I think he's going to go six, seven, around six or seven. Listen, folks, it's, I like Mo. I'm going to talk about his eval. You're going to hear that I like Mo, but it's going to be hard for an NFL front office to prioritize a guy that did have a, a significant injury. I mean, he tore his Achilles and he came back this year, looked perfectly healthy, but he missed the entire 2021 season with a torn Achilles. That's a major injury here. But that being said, he is super fun. He runs with a, he runs with a low center of gravity, allows him to bowl over Big Ten defenders, displays consistent contact balance, is an effective option in the red zone, pops off the line of scrimmage quickly, consistently finds his way into the second level of the field, quick field scraps through the end of or quick feet scraps through the end of runs. 4,597 career rushing yards. All right, 52 career rushing touchdowns in 39 games, 5.4 yards per carry. I put his fantasy comp here as Chris Carson. Because I like that uh, two down type back can explode through the gap here. And he's going to come with a lower draft capital. But that doesn't mean he can't be fantasy football relevant. It just means it's not going to be as easy of a path for Mo. But I really like him. Israel Izzy Abandaconda here uh, out of pit 5'11", 215, three star. Future running back four to five here, uh, early fourth round pick, uh, day three selection here for the NFL draft. Uh, my notes on him, downhill runner, aggressive back here, uh, accelerates well downhill. And I really, you know, I call him a classic downhill runner. He's kind of a little bit more of an old school type back. And I don't say that in a bad way. One cut runner turns up field with power, can hit the whole hard, take on linebackers without fear. You know, really aggressive. He battles through contact. He often leads to extra yards at the end of plays. You know, I got to see him live. I was at the Pitt Tennessee game. He tore up Tennessee. So definitely have a lot of respect for what he's doing here. Um, 2,177 career rushing yards, 28 rushing touchdowns in 30 games. I definitely think Izzy is a guy that it's worth keeping your eye on as we go through the process here. All right, we're nearing the end, folks, but we are not at the end. It's Tajay Spears out of Tulane, 5'10", 190, three-star back, future running back, 4'5". I have his ADP projection here, 408 to 412. I think he's just going to slide in the back of rookie drafts, and he's going to go late day three, 177 to 260. And it is because of size, 5'10", 190. I think that's going to drop him, especially if he ends up actually weighing in sub 190. 195, by the way, is that key number that we want to hit uh, on players. He's a twitchy athlete. He fires off the snap. He darts around the field. He's got fast feet. He's a reliable pass catcher, good lateral agility. I would really hone in from a fantasy perspective on that pass catching ability. We want to see that. We want NFL front offices to value that. 2,700 rushing yards, 550 receiving yards throughout his career his career playing for the green wave, 27 rushing touchdowns, 6.6 .6 yards per carry fantasy comp here is Kenny Gainwell. If we can get Kenny Gainwell out of Tajay Spears, that's a similar size. That's a similar skill set here. I think we'd be really happy with that and likely similar draft capital as Kenny Gainwell as well. All right. Evan Hole, running back out of Northwestern, 5'11", 210, three star. Evan Hole was somebody who I was a little bit higher on earlier on in the process. I think he's going to end up being this bench depth type running back. Uh, a little bit of a typo here. If you're watching on YouTube, it's 305 to 308 is his ADP projection, not 205 to 208. Uh, late day three uh, NFL draft selection. Hull is a patient runner. He's got good contact balance. He's a good short yardage back. He can be a reliable target out of the backfield. He's willing to take on defenders. He's willing to be aggressive and heads up with him. 
Uh, Devontae Booker is my comp for him. I think Hull is somebody who's just going to fly under the radar through the draft process. Uh, but I think at the end of the day, folks will catch on. They'll catch on to the fact that he had 2,400 rushing yards and 850 receiving yards in his career, 94 receptions. He was the Northwestern offense. And so although I'm only touching on Evan Hull briefly here, I do think he's somebody who we're going to be talking about a little bit later on in the draft process. Cam Run Peoples out of Appalachian State, 6'2", 224, also got a senior bowl invite. So in a similar way that Christopher Rodriguez got a bump from me, Cameron Peoples got a bump from me. All right, I think he's going to have an early fourth round ADP projection especially if he shows up at Mobile and shows out at Mobile. 103 to 107, that was that round uh, four and five range, early day three. You know, Peoples hits the hole hard. He attacks it. He's tenacious, good contact balance. We're talking about a power back here, a likely, uh, you know, likely two down back, but I don't say that in a bad way because he is reliable in pass protection. He is well-rounded. He can contribute to the passing game. But I'm just saying in terms of the way that people are going to view him through the draft process, I think they're going to view him as that bruiser two down back type guy. Over 2,800 rushing yards and 33 touchdowns in 37 career games. Seeing some Benny Snell there. I know that's not super, uh, you know, super flattering, but I did like Benny Snell coming out here. Uh, Tavion Thomas. This one's a little bit of a bummer to end on because I was very high. Tavion Thomas did make my uh, summer scouting. I was I was excited about him coming in. And I'm still excited about him, but you know, proceeding with realistic expectations, I didn't like my tape review on Tavion Thomas. Uh, folks, I don't stick to take lock. I don't. If, I, if my take's not good, I'll pivot off of it. I'll pivot off of any of these takes here as we move forward, as long as there's reason behind it. And I don't run from it either. You know, I'm not saying I just, you know, pivot and say, oh, I always love Tavion Thomas. You know, it's like if I, you know, I'm not going to sit here and if Tavion Thomas ends up you know, being a high draft pick, I'm not going to tell you that I always believed in him. I'm going to say I liked him and I didn't like him. And now here it is. The draft capital is here and I'm back. I'm on him. So I'm just saying that to, you know, point out the fact that I will pivot, but I'm going to be honest about when I pivot here. And, you know, Savion Thomas, solid contact balance, power back. You know, you do see decisiveness in his approach here. Um, but the speed's limited. The NFL draft capital, I think, is going to be limited because of the speed. You know, I think he's going to be somebody who goes – and uh, I think of Elijah Holyfield a couple of years back. He went to the combine and ran his 40, and you were just like, oh, man. All right, he's done. Struggles to, to see uh, the field. I mentioned vision. If I don't see vision, uh, that's not a good sign for me. So I didn't see good vision on his tape, especially his 2022 tape. His ability to overpower defenders looks inconsistent at times. If you're 220 and you can't run over Pac-12 defenders, I don't feel confident about your strength translating to the next level. But still, somebody who is a really great college player, 2,400 yards, 35 rushing touchdowns in 35 games, 5.2 yards per carry. Again, somebody who I do like. I'm just being realistic here. The fantasy comp is Malcolm Brown. Before we finish up here, I want to point out there are more players on the rookie big board here. There's about 12 more running backs. I'm just not sure if they've declared yet. Two guys that I do uh, know are declaring, but I just can't find the tape on them yet, but I don't want them to be snubbed from this list. Isaiah Davis, 6'1", 220 running back at a South Dakota State. That FCS tape it always is a little bit easier to scrap up later on in the draft process, but he's on the list. He'll be probably in that kind of... Um, you know, Mo Izzy range, maybe even as high as that um, Christopher Rodriguez, Dwayne McBride range when we actually get some tape eval on him. And then Daneric Prince, 6'1", 214, running back out of Tulsa, was invited to the Senior Bowl. Uh, Tulsa was not a very exciting offense, so they didn't make it on TV too much here. So folks probably don't know too much about Tulsa or Daneric Prince, but we're going to go ahead. We're going to try to dig up that tape here by the time we get through the draft process, because that's what we're doing. We're going in depth. We're ranking all of these guys for fantasy football purposes. Folks, now is the time of the year. You could say 15% on an annual membership at patreon.com slash rookie big board, get in on it, get in on the rankings, get in on the discord. As always, I appreciate you checking out this episode of the rookie big board.